All right, this may be the biggest debate in the game of golf. Well, at least on this channel. Do you regrip with tape and solvent or with compressed air? We're gonna talk about which one's better. Let's go. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Hope you're having a wonderful day. So this is a topic that comes up every single time I do a regripping video. Inevitably, if I do a video where I'm doing something with tape and solvent, I get a whole bunch of comments about compressed air. And when I do a video about compressed air, well, guess what? I get a bunch of comments about tape and solvent. So this video today, we're just gonna cover exactly which of these methods, in my opinion, is going to be better for your particular regripping needs? Okay, first off, let's just do a quick pros and cons list for each of these methods. First up, grip tape and grip solvent. Well, obviously this has been the dominant way to install golf grips for a very, very, very long time. And it's got a few things going for it. First off, it's pretty darn fast as far as actually installing, as far as actually putting on the grips. Secondly, it works basically with every single kind of grip out there. It doesn't matter the material, doesn't matter the form of the grip, it's gonna work with all of them. Third, it gives you a great hold, it's long lasting. So you don't have to worry about that grip moving around, going anywhere, once it's on there, once it is dry, it's, it's on there. Finally, it's inexpensive, right? You don't need a lot of tools to be able to put grips on the traditional quote unquote way. You need some grip solvent, you need some double-sided tape, a vise is extremely helpful, and some grips. I mean, that's really the whole list if you're really trying to bare bones it. Now, when it comes to the compressed air method, we do get some unique pros there that you don't get with the other method. Now, the first one is, yes, the compressed air method is also very fast when you're actually putting the grip on. But what you also get with compressed air is it's very fast to get grips off. And even more than that, if you're wanting to save the grip and reuse it, it's just as fast. It's very easy to not only put the grip on, but take it off just as quickly. The second pro is once you get that grip onto the shaft with compressed air, that club is ready to go. You can hit that club immediately. There is no waiting. Once that grip's on, you can go and hit it. And finally, the third real pro with compressed air is it's just a lot cleaner. You don't have all the dripping solvent. You don't have all the slippery, gooey tape. It's just a much cleaner process from start to finish when you're using compressed air. All right, now let's talk about the cons. First con when it comes to grip tape and solvent is gonna be, well, you have to wait. Doesn't matter how fast you are installing that grip, you are gonna be playing the waiting game for at least say 30 minutes to up to an hour waiting for that grip tape, waiting for that solvent to dry before you can actually hit the golf club. Con number two when it comes to grip tape and solvent, well, as we've already touched on, it's definitely messier. You've got more liquids, you've got sticky slash slippery grip tape. It's just not as clean a process as with compressed air. So if you're gonna be doing it somewhere other than a shop or a garage, you definitely wanna take some precautions, make sure there's something covering the floor or covering the table that you're using because it's just not as clean as with compressed air. The third con when it comes to grip tape and solvent is, well, it's a lot harder to remove that grip again. Now, obviously you can cut the grip off, but then that grip is toast, you can't use it again. If you want to be able to take a grip off, maybe cut an inch off a club, put that same grip back on, well, it's a lot harder to do if that grip was installed with tape and solvent. Not that it can't be done, I've done videos on this and I will leave a link down in the description to one of my personal favorites so that if you are needing to remove a grip that was installed the traditional way, it's probably the easiest way to do it. But it is a lot slower, it is a lot messier again than using compressed air. Now compressed air also has some cons to it. The first one, it's gonna be more expensive than the other method. It's gonna require, obviously, either a compressor or a tire inflator to get the job done. Now, a compressor is going to be more expensive, and as I've shown with a few videos I've done where I introduced the idea of using a tire inflator, that is going to be a smaller, simpler, cheaper alternative, and it works just as well. 
The good thing is you can buy them any number of places at any number of price points. I've bought and used both plug-in style and cordless style. They both do the job. You really just wanna make sure it can get to 60 PSI. You should be good to go. Now the second con when it comes to compressed air is the hold may not be as good. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that right now. So I have a grip on this club and hopefully you can see if I hold this just right that the end of the grip and the front of the grip here are all nice and lined up. Everything is nice and straight. I'm gonna hit a few balls now and I'm gonna miss these balls kind of on purpose. I'm gonna try and hit all these pretty far out on the toe and I'm gonna show you what can happen. All right, now I've hit a bunch of balls, really focusing everything out here on the toe. And what happens when you hit either on the toe or the heel? Well, the head will start to twist a little bit. You hit it way out on the toe, the head's gonna kind of do that. And what ends up happening is, if you look now down the shaft again, like we did before, notice the face is still lined up with the logo on the top here. But if you look at the logo down here on the butt cap, it is no longer lined up perfectly with the logo on the top. So all that is to say that the bond that you get with the compressed air is just not gonna be quite as uh, robust as it will be with tape and solvent. Now, obviously a grip like this, it's not really gonna matter if it twists a little, you're probably not gonna notice it, you're not gonna feel it, but there are gonna be some grips where it is gonna be more of an issue. And that leads into our third con for compressed air, which is not every type of grip, not every style of grip is going to be suited for compressed air. And actually now that is going to be what we talk about for the remainder of this video, looking at some different grip styles, some different grip types, and talking about which ones will and which ones won't work so well when it comes to compressed air. Let me just say, before we get into these individual grips, Going back to what I just showed you with the grip cap kind of slipping over time if you repeatedly hit it out on the toe or the heel. Obviously, if that happens and you have your own compressor, well, it is very easy to fix that issue just like this. Set it back in here. Turn on the air again and you can basically just twist it back to where it needs to be so that now, this isn't perfect, but the words here, the end of the grip here is now much more in line with the top end of the grip on this side. Remember, when we are talking about the two methods here, we're gonna be using two different kinds of tape. So when we are installing grips, the traditional method with tape and solvent, we use this, which is double-sided tape, right? It's got tape, it's got adhesive both on this side and on this side, so it sticks to the shaft and the grip. Also notice, because I get this question all the time, this is a double-sided tape dispenser. I get people all the time asking me, why aren't you taking the backing, this part here, off of the tape when you put it on the shaft? And I am, it's just being done for me using this series of wheels so that all the backing rolls up over here and I just get the tape on this side with both sides ready to go. So this is gonna be what we always use for grip tape and solvent. When we're talking about compressed air, this side, this roll of tape is just plain masking tape, meaning it's sticky on this side, but it's not sticky on this other side. And that's what we're using when it comes to the air method. Now, the only reason we're using masking tape is to size the grip properly. That masking tape does nothing to actually hold the grip onto the shaft. Again, the only adhesive on that tape is on the side that's touching the shaft, not the side that's touching the grip. So it's not doing anything to help hold the grip on. It's purely just a matter of trying to make that grip feel the same as it would if you installed it the traditional way with double-sided tape, 
So we're adding some tape in order to make the grip feel slightly bigger. Now here's the hack when it comes to the masking tape and air method. And I've gotten this again from BMX bikers and golfers from that. But you can take some hairspray, just plain old hairspray, spray a little of that onto the masking tape right before you air install the grip. And that hairspray, the glue basically that's in it will help hold that grip on better and keep it from slipping. Okay, finally, let's talk about what kinds of grips are gonna be good candidates for the air install method and which ones do you maybe want to stick to the grip tape and solvent method with? Well, when it comes to the air install method, the best grips are gonna be ones that are a softer rubber form, always also helpful if they have a softer butt cap section that's a little bit squishier, just makes it easier to get on. Any grip that is softer rubber, maybe has more of that tacky feel to it, like a star grip, like a pure grip, anything like that that has just that softer tacky feel to it are gonna be good candidates in general for working with compressed air. So that can be, again, pure grips, star grips. A standard tour velvet will work pretty darn well, albeit, the grip cap on this grip is pretty hard, so it takes a little extra effort to get the air, uh, either needle or the little raft tip that I use in here so that you can get the grip on and off, but these will work. Another grip I found, if you haven't seen before, this Royal Grip. This Royal Grip has almost a sandpaper texture on the outside, but it's extremely soft and squishy, has good tack to it, very soft butt end here. This would work extremely well when it comes to installing and removing with compressed air. Now there's also some grips you just probably don't wanna use with compressed air. And those are gonna be grips that one, are harder grips. Any sort of firmer feeling grip where the rubber is firmer do not work as well. It's harder to get them on and off. And it's also just, they're more likely to kind of slip around on you, I found, than those softer, tackier style grips. So that would be something like, say, the Z, uh, Z Tech or Z Cord grip from Golf Pride. This is a very firm grip, a very hard grip. I would not recommend using this with compressed air. Beyond that, you also want to shy away from grips that have a cord in them. Again, this Z Cord is not going to be a good candidate because it has that cord running through it, and that also makes it harder to get on and off in general, and a little more likely that it's gonna slip around on you. Another one would be the Golf Pride MCC. I have installed these with compressed air, but they do uh, have a greater chance I have found of slipping again because of that cord material that they're using. Now the other issue or the other style of grip that I would definitely stay away from is going to be anything with a reminder or any sort of guide running down the back, whether that is the Golf Pride Align or the Lampkin Calibrate or even this grip here, which is the Avon Chamois. I had these on a set of irons and these actually just have a rib running down the back of them. Any grip that has any sort of rib on it where you could get slipping and then all of a sudden that rib or that reminder gets twisted a little bit, that's not great because not only are you going to maybe see it when you look at it, but you're definitely going to feel it if that reminder is twisted around at the bottom. So any of these grips that have that reminder on them, I would definitely shy away from, or if you are gonna use the compressed air method, I would definitely look into that hairspray trick to ensure that you hopefully get less slipping around. So you've got pros and cons with both methods, but I think in the end, it's really gonna come down to what type of grip, what style of grip are you wanting to use, and that's really gonna dictate which method is gonna work better. That being said, definitely interested to hear from you guys if you use the hairspray method or if you go ahead after watching this video and use that hairspray method with the compressed air definitely let me know how that worked, how easy was it to get on and off, and how good was the hold when you use that, because I'd definitely like to get some more data on that that I can share with, or we can all share with each other, and see if that's maybe the best of both worlds. Hey, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you go down below, like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so, you'll, so you will be alerted when I post new videos, and I will see you on the next one. Take care.